Hello, and welcome to week three's lecture. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about, uh, again, multi-sides. And in this case, we're going to be talking about specifically uh, instances in which multi-sides occur in teams or pairs. Uh, so I'll pull up my notes here and we'll get started. Uh, I'm not going to touch too much on the different types, or at least not delve too deep into the different types of teams and pairs that uh, that exist. I'm going to give you an opportunity to to read about that. There's a lot of variables that exist in in serial killing and mass murder uh, teams and pairs, and they really run the gamut. They every type of combination that you can think of has existed at, at some point. Uh, you can have male and male partnerships, female and female uh, killing partnerships, uh, both a man and a woman partnerships. We have full uh, full teams that are more than just two. There have been partnerships of a parent and a child uh, or a step parent or a stepchild, adopted parent, things like that. Uh, and on top of that, the, the teams, you know, when you talk about male and male and female and female uh, and male female teams, they, they're not always romantic relationships. There, there are absolutely platonic relationships that still uh, result in these multi-sides, which is just, just fascinating that the different uh, combinations of teams and partnerships that, that result in these mass murders and serial killings and spree killings. Uh, but that being said, with all those variables that exist, there is one uh, almost uh, exclusive constant in these teams and partnerships. And that's the idea of sociological dominance uh, in any, especially partnerships. Uh, but but still existent in uh, existent in teams uh, is that that idea of of sociological dominance. There is one person that is the dominant member of that team or partnership, and today today we're going to talk about how that uh, how that is manifest and how that is created and how uh, you know folks we we talked about uh, a week or two ago we talked about the idea that you know why is society so fascinated with with multi-sides and serial killings and mass murders. Uh, another question that comes up is, why would anybody ever allow themselves to be put in a situation where they're agreeing to commit not just one, but multiple murders? And that idea of sociological dominance is, is the answer to that question. So today we're gonna to talk about how that, is, how that comes to be, how one person is set, essentially establishes dominance over another person or another series of people. The first thing that occurs is the idea that the person that establishes dominance has to identify a target, for lack of a better word, lack of a better word. The, the idea that there is somebody out there that is vulnerable and easily controlled and the dominant person or the person to be dominant uh, in the future has to identify that person. You got to find a, a person that can be controlled. And that is the, the first step. And then once that person is identified or or pointed out or or chosen, selected, uh, that's when there's a, a little dance, a little relationship. Uh, and again, when I use that term relationship, I'm not talking about romantic relationships all the time. It can be, absolutely. There's a ton of examples of uh, romantic relationships that result in, in multi-side. But when I, see, when I say relationship, in the same way that I have a relationship with, with my friends, uh, and I also have, rela I have romantic uh, relationships in the past I, it, it doesn't matter what type of relationship it is a you relate to someone and that's what I'm talking about in this uh, in this lecture so at once that person that, that has been targeted or selected by the by the dominant individual uh, is identified then the the idea of uh, molding them into what needs to be uh, we, we call that seduction so seduction, I think in, in society, most folks consider that term seduction to be sexual in nature, and it can be in these cases, but when it comes to platonic relationships, uh, seduction absolutely exists. It's just the idea that that the dominant person has selected a, a target, and they're getting them to, to value or respect or need that dominant partner in their life. That can occur in things like, uh, or through things like gifts or uh, over-the-top affection, or uh, creating environments that are exciting. This, this target, this targeted individual, the, the less dominant, the submissive individual in this uh, multi-side relationship starts feeling as though, oh, I, I want this person in my life. This person has created excitement, or this person is showing affection, 
is showing love, is showing, uh, you know, giving me things. All these things that have, have created this, uh, this value in their relationship have become more and more important to, to the targeted individual. And that's the idea, that second step of, of seduction. So the first step is identification. The second step is seduction. The, the third step, once the, the person has felt the, uh, the bond and started to create this, this desire to be in this platonic or romantic relationship, the next step is to reshape the norms of, uh, of that targeted individual. So the dominant in individual will uh, start doing things like introducing ideas that uh, may not be uh, adhering to the norms of the targeted individual, the, the, the more submissive individual. That person doesn't come into the relationship wanting or, or necessarily desiring to commit one or more homicides, but the idea of scary uh, scenarios or stories or predicaments are going to be slowly introduced. And the slowly introduced uh, getting somebody outside of their comfort zone is going to be reshaping what is going to be their new norm. So they may come in, uh, you know, as I've said before, the, the, the target may be square like Delaware. They, they may just be have have no interest in breaking the law, let alone committing homicide, but small incremental steps of introducing these new norms, these new uncomfortabilities are going to occur. And then again, that, that's why it reshapes their norms. Uh, the alternative, unfortunately, in the eyes of the the targeted individual, the more submissive individual in these relationships, uh, the the unfortunate circumstance is that they realize that if they don't adhere to these new norms, they're going to lose out on this relationship that they've already started to invest in and already started to feel themselves desiring. So if they want to stay in this relationship, then they need to start following the, these new suggestions, these new paths that are created for them. So uh, they don't want to be excluded in the relationship. They don't want to be abandoned. Uh, there could be threats of things like neglect or abuse or even manifestations of neglect or abuse if the uh, the targeted individual doesn't necessarily uh, adhere to these new reshaped norms. So uh, so again, we, we've got a, a identification of the individual, uh, the seduction into the relationship, the reshaping of the norms of that new individual, that submissive individual. And then once those norms have started to be reshaped in order to maintain those norms, the dominant individual in these multi-site relationships has to isolate the targeted individual or individuals uh, from their old network. Their old network that reinforced the old norms has to be removed. So the targeted individual has to be isolated from uh, their family, their friends. Uh, and that can be done by essentially the idea that the the dominant individual is the one who provides the affection or provides the resources or the bulk of the interactions and made sure that the old network is just removed from the scenario. And that way there is just one person reinforcing these new norms. These new norms obviously started out small. We said they were incremental, but the, the new norms are going to eventually in these situations eventually lead to murderous inclinations uh, and we can't have in their center in their eyes we can't have uh, the old network uh, countering these new norms somebody you know if you're if you're not isolated if the individual wasn't isolated from their uh, their old network and they're being seduced and and their new norms are being reshaped uh, somebody from their old network could just easily say what are you doing like what why are you doing you never used to do this what's brought this on and then they could counter and 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 uh and fight the the new reshaping so uh isolation is absolutely crucial in in that process uh another form of of isolation and uh, and ensuring that there is reinforcement for these these new norms is increasing levels of punishment uh whether it be physical punishment uh verbal even sexual punishment uh, the idea that the dominant person is doing just that, uh, they are uh, showing their dominance through these levels of punishment, uh, doesn't always have to be extreme, but there is going to be some sort of, uh, you know, change in behavior. And that's what we've said, punishment, discipline in general, whether it be in the criminal justice world or, or in children or in uh, peer groups, discipline is meant to uh, change behavior and reinforce norms. 
So society says that you can't uh, break any number of laws in the penal code. And when you do, then society, the courts will punish you. Same thing with these these dominant and submissive relationships in, in multi-side uh, scenarios. If the norms aren't adhered to, in these case, murderous criminal norms aren't adhered to, there's going to be punishment. And punishment will reinforce those new norms. Uh, and one of the things that that punishment does uh, is as the the more that the dominant individual in these relationships punishes and 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 changes the behavior of the the submissive individuals uh it really starts to erode that that self esteem they start seeing themselves as a part of this this relationship and not as an individual which again cyclically reinforces that relationship so uh just to to recap before i let you guys go uh these steps that uh that are crucial in helping society understand how how somebody could ever find themselves in a relationship like this is is just like this. Uh, the individual is targeted. A dominant individual will will target a submissive individual. They will they will select them. There is a seduction that will get them to to value that relationship, the relationship with the dominant partner. That dominant partner then starts to reshape the norms of the submissive individual or individuals. Once those norms are started to have have begun to be reshaped, the the social interactions of the old networks start to erode and the dominant individual will ensure that the, the submissive uh, partners are isolated from their old networks and their old family and friends. And then through an increasing level of punishments, uh, again, physical or, or, uh, or verbal or sexual punishments, uh, the self-esteem of that less dominant individual starts to erode and, uh, and they still, they feel reliant on not only that dominant person, but the relationship in general. So hopefully this gives you some some idea of how those relationships are formed and how people find themselves in that situation. And if you're ever in a conversation with somebody who asks that very question and, and says, hey, I don't understand how anybody would ever uh, agree to be part of a, a, a murderous team, you can kind of help them uh, help them understand the idea of, of sociological dominance. All right. Uh, one thing that has uh, come up in the uh, grading scheme, I just want to let you know, and I put an announcement on there is there's a little snafu with the grading. So I gave a lot of uh, feedback on your uh, PowerPoints from that I graded this week. Uh, although the feedback may not uh, correspond with your grade, your grade may be lower than the feedback indicates. And that's because there's a just a, a yeah, an error, a, a software glitch right now with the, the grading system. So uh, just know that I will hopefully have that fixed next week. So uh or actually by the time you you see this it'll be this week so uh let me know reach out if you have any questions and i look forward to uh, seeing your assignments this week we have a video presentation so make sure that you uh follow the prompt create the video and make sure it's the link that is required in the uh in the prompt and i cannot stress this enough please 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 this is not story time hour don't read me your notes you can use notes but i mean i I'm using notes right now as I have bullet points that uh, that you can't see. Uh, you know, use your bullet points, but talk to the camera. Don't read to me. All right. I will talk to you guys soon.